Hey guys, uh, the information I'm going to be giving you today is pretty much the pre-lab information that we would have done before your titration lab that was supposed to happen the week before spring break. So uh, this is a basically kind of like pre-lab information with a little bit of extra since you can't actually perform the lab itself. So in a gist, uh, in a nutshell, the lab was you are going to be titrating a strong acid with a strong base and have a pH meter nearby to monitor the pH as you titrated. So let's get into some of this information and hopefully it'll help kind of see how it was supposed to work. So in a typical titration setup, as you guys know, Usually the base is the thing in the burette. The official name for that is called the titrant, um, but that's not always the case. So make sure you read the problems carefully. And usually the acid is what they call the analyte, the thing in the flask. And that's where your indicator, uh, typically phenolphthalein, but it could be other things too, usually gets added to that acid down there in the flask. Some equivalence point reminders. Uh, before spring break, we were looking at acid-base problems where you are at that equivalence point, the stoichiometric ratio point, where you've added just enough base to fully react with the acid. You don't have any leftover reactants. What we're going to be looking at now is how the products of those acid-base reactions might affect the pH. So you were doing problems like that before spring break, um, but we didn't show you any graphs to go along with that information. So just a quick review of those scenarios and uh, what they would look like. So our four scenarios, you could have a strong acid, strong base, strong acid, weak base, a weak acid, strong base, and a weak acid, weak base. What you were seeing beforehand was that the pH at the equivalence point for a strong acid, strong base was always going to be 7 because your products are water and a salt whose cation and anion don't have any impact on the pH. If you're in scenario B, a strong acid, weak base, then your pH at the equivalence point is going to be less than 7. That the easy way to remember it is that the strong acid wins, and so you have a low pH. Uh, what's really going on is that when you uh, react that strong acid and a weak base, the products of that reaction react with each other to create additional hydronium ions, which drives down the pH. Scenario C, weak acid and strong base, is where the pH at the equivalence point is greater than 7. The easy way to remember it is that the strong base wins. The AP explanation for it is that the products of that reaction create water and some ions that produce additional hydroxide ions, which brings the pH up. And then the fourth scenario, weak acid, weak base, the pH can vary. It can be all over the place. It could be less than 7. It could be equal to 7. It could be greater than 7. It really depends on the Ka and Kb values of the acid base that are reacting with one another. 